CV Radio does provide a very valuable service and uh, it is available to everybody. So CVs are, are, are shared. You don't need a license, so you don't need to pay anything for operating on CB Radio, UHF CB. There is a five watt power limit. So most of the gear that you buy for UHF CB already has that. So you don't need to worry about making sure that you run the correct amount of power because you've the the equipment that's made for Australia and New Zealand is already limited to five watts. So you don't need to worry about that. We, as I said, we've got 80 channels. There's 80 channels in New Zealand as well because you guys, you don't call it UHF CB. You call it PRS, don't you? Yeah, it's uh, honestly, we just call it walkie talkies, you know, if I'm being honest. Yeah. No one uses yep. the real name. It's just I went to the shop and I bought some walkie talkies and we turned them on and we went to channel one, which is where all the cool kids are. And we just started yep. broadcasting our hearts out. That's no one calls it anything. So yeah, UHF CV, at least here in Australia, is used by a lot of um, truck drivers, and councils, RV, um, outback people in the outback traveling, four-wheel drivers, uh, people touring around. So it's used by a lot of people. There's Look, there's all the channels that are listed here with the frequencies. You don't need to worry about all of these frequencies and what they mean. You just really need to worry about the channels pretty much and the sum that you need to uh, avoid. So here on the channel list for Australia... There is channel five, which is an emergency use only channel. So that is one to avoid unless it is an absolute emergency. Then there is a simplex channel, which is for four-wheel drivers, convoys, clubs, and national parks. That's channel 10. If you're brand new to UHF CB, jump on channel 11 and give a call out and say, is anyone listening? The other thing is you don't need a call sign. You don't, you don't have call signs. You can make up whatever you want. Um, <laughs> within reason, um, some people do make up their own call signs, but um, but yeah, if you jump on uh, channel eleven, you uh, you might find someone there. Uh, there's other ones here: channel eighteen, caravan and campers for convoys. Channel twenty two and twenty three, this is for data only, no no voice, so you can't talk on these ones. And pretty much all the rest are pretty standard, except for channel thirty five, which is emergency use only. I mentioned that the power output is restricted to five watts, but you're allowed to use any antenna you want. You're not restricted to a specific antenna. You can build your own antenna. You can buy your own antenna. As long as you can connect it to your radio, you're good to go. The distances, so you said that you were using it, you know, just talking to the kids across, you know, maybe across the park or something Paddock, like that. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're getting a, if you get a decent antenna and one of the, the bigger radios that can do five watts, you're probably still going to be limited to line of sight range or maybe five to 10 kilometers or so mm -hmm. non-line of sight, depending on what's in the way. If there's buildings, there's trees in the way, then that's going to attenuate your signal and you're not going to get um, as good a signal. But then other times, if you've got line of sight and you could be 50 k's away, if you can see the other, the other side and you've got a good mm -hmm. antenna and a good radio, you will easily be able to talk. So... That is the limitation with UHF CB. There's things called repeaters, which are located usually up on on large hilltops, which you on your radio, you tune to the output, which is generally channels one to eight. So if we go back to those those frequencies there, here we got here repeater output, repeater output, repeater output. So these are the these are the repeater channels that you listen to. And when you get on one of those channels, you press the duplex button, D U P or duplex, and then you talk through your radio and you'll go via the repeater if you're in range of it. Here is a map which is cbreference.com. But this is actually a pretty cool map. This has got a lot of repeaters uh, dotted around here on this map of Australia. If we go in here and zoom in on Tasmania, if you click on one of the white markers, it gives you all of this information. Now, a lot of this is pretty unnecessary. The only thing you need to look at is here, this NEC03. So the last digit is generally the channel number. So this will be a repeater on channel three. Uh, now this is located at Ben Lomond, which is up in the, the north of Tasmania. Here's another one here in Hobart. If I click on that, channel eight here, and it's located here at Mount Nelson in Hobart. So if you think that you're within range, put your radio onto that repeater channel, press the duplex button, give a call out and you should generally hear the repeater come back to you. You'll either hear a beep or you'll hear a tail. You might even hear people talking on it as well. And then that way you'll be able to operate and you'll be able to extend your range a lot further than what you normally would. 
So I've just done a search for UHFCB here on Amazon. So you can click on that link in the chat or in the description and you can either have a look on Amazon or eBay. We're going to look at both. So this is some of the gear that you can buy. So this is a little four pack. This is a little colored four pack, which is pretty cool. These ones actually come with this marketed kid zone block out unwanted conversations, which is a, a, a nifty little feature. So you turn that on and it, and it um, masks other people. You can't hear other people unless they have the exact same tone as you. And because there's like, a whole heap of tones. I can't remember off the top of my head how many. They have to try and guess the correct tone, which is probably, you know, not going to happen or they'll get fed up. Um, these are made by Uniden and like four pack for 85 bucks. Like that's pretty good. Like that's $20. Yeah, it's a, really good. Yeah, $20 a unit. Hand, handhelds or walkie talkies. And then there's also these units which are meant for the car and these install in your four wheel drive or your vehicle and uh, are meant to be connected to an antenna. So this one here is a, a radio bundled with an antenna. Um, there's ones here that are just radio standalone. And one question probably is what's the difference between all of these? Well, mainly is just the brand. Um, some of them might have extra features like scanning or they might have like this one's got a, a cool little microphone where you can, so rather than having the channels displayed on the front of the radio, it's actually displayed on the mic. So you can pick it up and you can actually look and see the information on the mic, which makes it a lot easier, especially when you're driving. And when you're like, when you're on a four wheel drive track, you're, you're being knocked about all over the place. It's a lot easier to view that um, than rather than looking down or wherever the radio is installed. A bit of a shout out for GME. I, I recommend GME gear because it is really high quality stuff it's probably not the cheapest stuff in the world but it is really good uniden's pretty good as well i, I haven't used oricom before but uh uniden and gme are the two you know the two main ones and i've actually got a, a gme handheld here which i haven't unboxed yet because i'm nice. going to do a video on it and that's a little five watt handheld which is uh is pretty cool that's a little antenna which has got a little magnet on the bottom of it so basically what you do is, is you slap this on top of your car and then you run the cable in maybe through the window and you can plug that into the into the little um, walkie-talkie because the antenna unscrews on that walkie-talkie. Not all of them do. The the ones that you talk, the colored ones, they don't have mm. um, antennas that you can unscrew. Some of these antennas, if we take this one, for example, these ones are meant to be installed on your bull bar. Um, they come with a, a, a spring at the bottom so that if you ever run into anything, because they're quite long, the spring means that they, they won't, the, also, the shock of the car as the car vibrates, they won't vibrate apart. And if you hit anything, then the spring should take a, a bit of the blow so you won't snap it off. And you can also remove these particular ones too. So if you are going in underground car parks all the time, you can unscrew them from the base. They are rated by the amount of gain that they've got. So this has got 6.6 .6 dBi. The higher the gain, technically, the more range you will get. If you're in a mountainous region or you've got surrounded by buildings like you're in the city, then sometimes a lower gain is better than a higher one because a majority of the signal is focused towards the horizon. The higher the gain, the more signal to the, towards the horizon. The lower the gain, the more the signal will go up and are over the hills and, and out over obstructions and stuff like mm. that. 